Good morning, book lovers. It's Robert Boyd coming at you with yet another book report. And this time I'm reviewing a book called Grip by a cartoonist named Lael Vesvend. And it, it's, it's very interesting on many levels. Um, I'm going to talk about the plot, even though it's a wordless comic, so plot is not necessarily the most important aspect of it, but it does tell you a little bit about, I think, Vesven's point of view. But first I want to mention that uh, I became aware of this comic uh, when uh, my favorite comics podcast, Comic Books Are Burning in Hell, uh, listed it as one of the uh, 10 best comics of the past decade, which is kind of an amazing um, honor for it. And it's not like uh, Lael Vesvend was a is a well-known cartoonist. I mean, I don't want to say she's obscure, and I think uh, her reputation is growing by leaps and bounds. But at the time they gave it that top ten ranking, the first two parts of the story had come out as risograph comics in editions of less than a thousand. So not that many people had seen it. Um, I hadn't. I I ordered one immediately but the other one was sold out long ago so this book edition is a uh, is published by perfectly acceptable press in Chicago and they they in a publisher's note they say this is their first offset printed edition and so the thing about um risograph is that you're using um a limited number of colored inks and you can combine them in any way and people do it very creatively but if you're going to do it in the offset printing you can't really just uh you can't totally imitate how a risograph looks but they they did their best by uh instead of uh doing your your basic uh four color printing they did three color printing and they used three very unusual colors and they they say what they use they used up uh, uh, pantone 812U, which is hot pink. Um, they use uh, Pantone Yellow E, which was a uh, an intense yellow, and Pantone uh, 288U, which is a dark blue. And that uh, does the job of mimicking uh, how the risograph might have looked. Um, I'm not sure if it's totally exact. I didn't actually sit down and compare it with the original risograph version. But it has it, the colors are intense, and um, and I'm going to apologize here in advance. I you know I scanned in pages to show you, and none of the pages I scanned in have the intensity of the book. There's something about really hot colors that you know scanning just doesn't doesn't reproduce. So uh, I apologize for that, but that should be. Uh, a reason for you to go out and find the copy of this book. Um, anyway, uh, let me talk about the book a little bit. It's like I said, it's wordless, so I, I'm going to refer to the pro protagonist without saying her name. But the protagonist is a young woman, and she's walking down the street one day, and s notices something in an alley and she looks in the alley and there's this weird swirly shape in the alley it's like a little tornado and she gets caught up in it and let me say before i go further in the the um the plot the art is really psychedelic and so it's full of swirly crazy images so she gets caught up in this swirly image and of course it's depicted in an insane way and it affects her hands. Um, she she gets a power, like a superpower. Um, at first, she's really clumsy with it. She's destructive. Uh, she tries to pick up things in her house, like a toaster and a telephone, and ends up destroying them. And she's trying to get a job, um, and she does get a job handling uh, packages, but she destroys them so that that's not going to work as a job and then she tries to get a job as a waitress or a f food server and at first she's clumsy but she's 
gradually getting control of her hands and becomes quite good at it. And then uh, the uh, the old lady who runs the cash register gives gives her a picture of an island, as in like check out this island, and uh, she meets uh, someone an, another woman who's um, a pilot and who agrees to I guess fly her to the island. I say agrees. It's not like a you know. Since there's no words, there's no way to say what what was what was exchanged between them in terms of a uh, agreement. But does in fact fly her to this island. They fly through a storm, and um, and the protagonist uses her magic hand powers to like uh, save the plane. They land, and then the protagonist explores the island, um, and then uh, builds herself a shelter using hand power. And um, and then uh, after she's built a shelter and a bunch of psychedelic visions, she constructs a telescope. Her hands have her hands have ceased to be just like you know things for picking things up and moving things, but have become capable of creating things from raw materials. Um, she constructs this telescope and she looks through it, and in a very distant place. It doesn't seem to be on the island. She observes uh, a bunch of women having what seems to be kind of a festival. They're on motorcycles, they're dancing, etc. So she builds herself her own motorcycle, and um, and then um, takes off, riding through the ether into a kind of cloud utopia, where she meets the women and joins them. So. What what I think is underlying this is, um, well, I think I I did read an interview with Lael Vesfand, and she said she was very interested in in honoring the idea of manual labor. That's why I'm holding up my hands because hands is so important to this story and to this artist. Um, but also I think underlying it is a sense of um, a kind of female utopia. Um, there, there seems to be, I mean, without, like, you know, getting in any way explicit, there, there seems to be kind of a, a sexual energy there. She, um, the, the woman on the plane seems to have, like, a con, a connection with, uh, uh, the protagonist that seems potentially romantic, I don't know, and ditto with, a a woman that she makes eye contact with in, in the restaurant where she works, and, uh, and when she's looking through the telescope, she makes eye contact, or it seems. I know you can't really make eye contact through a telescope, but you can draw it, and 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 Lael Vesfand did. So maybe uh, this female utopia is a uh, is a, a lesbian utopia, and there's only one male in the uh, story, and he's not like you know a bad person or anything. It's not like a um, anti male story. He's the guy who hires her for the package uh, handling job. Um, so, uh, but anyway, th that that's sort of my overview of it. And I, I'm, I, as I've been telling you these um, these descriptions, um, I I I've been showing you pages, and I hope I hope they give you the idea of how interesting and powerful this artwork is. Lael Vesvin, I I don't know what she's going to do next, but. She's an amazing artist, and I, I think uh, while it might have been kind of premature to list her as one of the ten best of the last uh, decade, I think the comic books are burning in hell, guys. Recognize that this is someone who's created a masterpiece and is going to create more. She's a young woman, and uh, who knows what's going to ha happen next. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can't wait myself. This is a great book. Um, it's wordless, so no matter what language you speak, I assume you speak you speak English. You're listening to this blog. You can you can get it. You, you can apprehend it. I mean, I think there are literally no words in it. You know, sometimes when you see a wordless comic, there'll be signs on buildings and things, and there's nothing like that in this one. And uh, it's kinetic all the way through. It. The, the, you, it doesn't let your eyes really rest on anything. 
except at the very end when she finds this female utopia. Um, anyway, it gets my highest recommendation, Grip by Lael Vestvend. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in, uh, to the book in uh, my description. And one last thing, I, I added some music to the beginning. I, I liked uh, doing the, the, um, the uh, Bach uh, trumpet cantata last time, so I wanted to continue this, the, uh, the horns. So this time it's uh, Janacek's Symphonietta, the beginning of Janacek's Symphonietta, from 1926, I think. So I'm not sure if that's public domain or not. I hope it is. Um, anyway, thanks very much for listening. Goodbye.